Hello, everybody. Welcome to Esoteric Atlanta. Before we get into the episode today, I did want to take a moment to give a viewer shout out to one of our viewers here, one of our friends here on Esoteric Atlanta named Tracy Woodman. Now, like Adam, whose book link is down in the description box below, Tracy is also an author. And um, I wanted to give you guys a little bit of information about Tracy because she has written some pretty interesting books about mind crimes, which seems to be pretty much the gist of this great awakening, right? So Tracy said, when I was a little girl, I would sit on my bed and write stories. I don't know what happened to them. Sometimes I wish I'd saved them, if only to have a good laugh. I'm sure they weren't very good. I mean, I must have been maybe 11 at the time, but I remember I wanted to grow up to be a writer. And to be honest with you, Tracy, that's what I wanted to be when I was a little girl too. When I was in the fifth grade, I wrote a book called The Golden Glow Cookie Jar. My mom still might have that book somewhere. We had to write it. I think it was in the fifth grade. It was for some competition and I actually won the award for the best story. I wrote a story about a cookie jar that a little girl finds in a new home. And this cookie jar glows this golden color. Every time it glows, she would open the cookie jar and there would be an item in the cookie jar that if she picked it up would transport her back to historical moments in time. So even in the fifth grade, I was a little bit of a history nerd. But Tracy, I totally feel you. I was the same girl. What started out as a challenge to write a book so I could say I wrote a book became a hobby and is now the fulfillment of a childhood dream. In the past few years, I have written three books, two of which are part of what is called Operation Mind Crimes series. I'm working on book three now. Some may call this series historical fiction because it deals with our recent history. The stage is set by revisiting the politics of the 1960s. Many may think that I, what I write is conspiracy theory. That's okay. Although I can tell you that most of what I've written is verifiable. The spirit series exposes some of the secret government programs, such as the story is told from the viewpoint of a young family who was first affected by the Vietnam struggle, then by the realization that the government is using college students, women, and children as experiments to find ways to manipulate the mind. Mind control, brainwashing, manipulation, manipulating the mind, call it what you will. The lives of the Stewart family are permanently altered due to these programs. The stories which expose these truths is told from the perspective of the Stewart family. Although the family is fictitious, much of which they experience has happened in real life. By reading the series, you will be sharing their experiences and emotions of living through these times. I know many who were in the military during the Vietnam struggle. Many hesitate to read the series because they don't want to relive the pain. I understand completely. I want to let you know that the books mostly tell the story of what went on in the States and as witnessed by civilians. There is a chapter towards the end of the first book, The War Within, that might be painful to read. If you do want to read the book, please note that chapter 45 does take place in the Pacific. It is a short chapter. You might want to skip over it, although there is some important information in the chapter that rounds out the story. I am not a veteran. So no matter what I've done for research, I will never understand what you went through. I try to do justice to all the veterans in the series and will continue to do that as a series evolves. I dedicate the first two books to the military and those who have suffered due to crimes. My heart goes out to all of you. In addition to the Operation Mind Game series, I am writing other books. Remember the Kiss tells the story of a second chance while incorporating the idea of reincarnation within the lives of the characters. I'd like to thank Nora Jones for allowing me to use her song, Come Away With Me, in the book. If you are interested in learning more about my books, you can visit my website at www.authorlywoods.com. On my website, you will find my recent work, and you will find the works that will be coming soon. You can read my blog and find my research page. I share the research page so you can see the resources I use when writing my book. You will find many links where you can navigate your, your way to begin your own research as you continue to awaken while remembering to continue to work on yourself, as Bryce says. I want to thank all of you who support my work. While I write fiction, I will try to be sure I incorporate the element of human emotion into my work. My desire is to bring out the best in humanity, even if the situation is dire. I'm hoping to bring healing through what I write. It may take me a little while to realize what the, that looks like but I will continue to work towards helping all of us to move into the light. 
Thank you so much, Tracy. I will be placing all of Tracy's links down in the description box below. I myself am looking forward to reading your series. And I want to say too, if there's anybody else out there that has some work that they would like for me to advertise on this channel, please email me. This channel isn't just about me. It never has been just about me. This channel is about us. We are all just walking each other home. And so I am so proud to be able to showcase anybody's work, especially any person that's out there working for the betterment of humanity. All right, guys, on to the show. Too. yeah uh, we were just chit-chatting away guys i'm so bad about this like i will everybody i've said this so many times everybody i film with on the regular are my actual friends Friends. and she's my actual friend so we're just chit-chatting talking about kissing and boys and all that kind of stuff and all of a sudden i'm like oh wait we gotta record a show <laughs> um, so but what i'm really excited about is you guys know angie is like a woman of many, many talents. She started off as a bank teller in Athens, Georgia. And now she has this kick-ass company where she pickles. And we've talked about this. I will put a link again down to her website below so you can kind of see her masterpiece and her the master her mastermind behind her creations. And um, she sent our friend Stephanie some pickles and Stephanie's son, who is the biggest junk food eater I've ever met. I mean, all teenage boys are, but Stephanie was like, he is literally eating these pickles. Everything that she pickled for him. It's like going, like it's going out of style. Like is he eating the okra. I, yeah, even, well, I even sent him a little video of the okra growing in my garden. I was like, listen, this is how it grows. This is, you know, it's not a scary thing. <laughs> You know what I said? I think I said to Stephanie, I was like, Lord, I don't even think I've seen okra that isn't fried. <laughs> just Because fried okra is such a big, we fry everything down here in the South. Everything's fried. So um, fried green tomatoes, fried everything. So, um, but, but you guys know, and, and Stephanie was like, Tyler is eating these things like they're going out of style. And, um, and that's a lot for a teenage boy to eat a vegetable yeah. and to like it. Like that is, that is, you don't get a better compliment than that. It's like okra, carrots, green tomatoes, cucumbers, but I can't remember what all I sent him. But um, yeah, when, whenever I found out he wore a pickle costume for Halloween, it's like he's got to have our pickles. So I want to see him in that pickle con. I, I, I just need to see. I need to see. I him need to send him some more. He needs to wear the costume. He needs to hold the jars and he could like, he could like be the God. thumbnail. <laughs> so um so anyway and but you know guys this is like and, and you if you guys have not heard that story of of, of angie's uh, fickles her company fickles i will put a link to that down in the description box below because andrew angie is truly a poster child for what we call the phoenix rising you know and and as she said i'll just make a, a really short and condense it down 2008 happened that to all of us it all it happened to all of us and everybody lost a lot. And Angie basically was like, all right, we got a course correct now. You know, I talk a lot about friction. 2008 was a time of friction for a lot of people. And friction means that you got to change. And she created this company. And it's been very successful. And, and if you guys watch, if you go look at Angie's channel, her YouTube channel, which I'll place again, a link down in the description box below, you have so many videos and it's only recently you've been talking about like more spiritual stuff and more, um, but a lot of your old videos you're showing, you're showing like different things you're making and, and cooking. And, um, and Angie texts me the other night. And when she texts me her idea, I was like, First of all, I was like, why hasn't anybody ever thought of this before? And this is the most brilliant idea I've heard so far. And I know we talk about the doshas a lot, the vata, pitta, kapha, dosha, which is the disposition of energy. Uh, everybody carries a disposition and that determines what kind of foods you should eat. And I've said on my channel, the minute I learned the dosha system and I started eating for my dosha, all of my digestion problems stopped. All of my um, ar arthritis issues stopped. And I realized here, and I think they've done this intentionally. You know, we growing up, we had the food um, pyramid. 
but that food pyramid isn't right for everyone. You know, as, as a Vata, I need more like potatoes and more, I, I can't be eating apples unless they're cooked or salads because that's a Vata food. I need a cup of food. And I know for a lot of people, this is new information. Um, once you figure it out though, it's life changing. And so Angie's idea, she texted me and she was like, what if I created some dishes, some recipes, and like I did a cooking video for the different doshas. A feast for the doshas. <laughs> I love it. And I was like, Angie, Angie, you're a genius. And, and I think this makes it fun. Um, I know our friend Stephanie has really been experimenting with how to make because I'm going to be honest with you guys, the, the biggest obstacle to eating for your dosha, and this is why I don't like the term intuitive eating, because when you're eating for your dosha, what you're learning is the things that you crave is usually not what you need because like attracts like. So I'm Vata. So I crave Vata foods because I'm Vata. I'm air. So I want the airy foods, which is like anything growing on a vine, grapes, um, strawberries, lettuce. But I need the opposite. And when we eat foods that are igniting too much of the same energy, we're going to have health problems. We're going to have anxiety. We're going to have constipation. We're going to have all these things because the body is energy and the food is energy. And so we have to match it. And when I ch changed my diet and totally started eating kappa foods, I mean, everything started to change in my life. I was calmer. I was happier. And so um, Angie's idea is brilliant. And so if you're someone who needs a pitta diet, Angie's going to look at this and create pitta diets is spicy. That's fire, the spicy diets, right? Um, if you're a kappa, you're going to need more vata. So you're going to need more fun salads and uh, things to do with fruits. And you're going to need more raw fruits and vegetables. And so Angie, if you're like me and you're vata, you're going to need more of the cooked, really heavily cooked potatoes, sweet potatoes. And so part of the fun in this I think Angie hit the nail on the hand is finding new recipes and ways to incorporate this. And so um, before we get into it, I'm just going to go over to this quick little website I have here. I found that it is a, does a really good job of talking about the Ayurvedic doshas. So Ayurveda, Ayurveda is built around the five elements of ether, air, fire, water, and earth. The unique combination of these elements comes together to make up the doshas, the constitutions of vata, pitta and kappa and once again guys this is not a ph sound because it's sanskrit it's kappa kappa according to ayurveda the doshas control creation maintenance and breakdown of bodily tissue and elimination of waste as well as psychological aspects such as emotions understanding and love when balanced the doshas maintain the system of the body when one of the doshas increases Due to diet and lifestyle habits, imbalance is created. And that's what disease means. D disease is imbalance. It means to be dis at ease. All right. Ayurveda can help restore harmony to areas that have lost balance. And the emotions are right. I tell people all the time when you're trying to figure out what foods work for you to keep a food diary. And sometimes your body negatively reacting to a food isn't going to come in the form of um, constipation or diarrhea or indigestion. It's going to bloat you. Also, it can come in the form of depression and anxiety. So if you eat something and you feel like sad afterwards, that's not a coincidence. It's, it's giving you too much of a certain energy. So it's pulling your emotions into disarray. So the three dosha, each dosha has a number of corresponding qualities that are expressed in the physical, emotional, and mental aspect of one's being. Here are the primary qualities of each dosha as they show up in various areas of the self. So vata, so this is my dominating dosha is vata. So body frame is thin. Weight is hard to gain, easy to lose. Skin is cold, dry, thin. So my skin is very dry. I never... I never struggled with like acne. I never, um, ever, because I'm so dry. And my, that my skin is very thin. I cut myself a lot just on stupid things. Um, hair, I do not have Vata hair. We'll get into that. But most Vata has dry, frizzy, thin hair. My hair is the one element of my body that's Kappa, actually. It's the one thing I have. I don't have enough Kappa to register in Kappa, but that's the one element I have is my hair. So eyes, uh, small, fine lashes, unusual color, appetite irregular. Absolutely. Vatas forget to eat. And we're the one dosha that needs to eat the most. So for vatas, when a vata, the, when you start to get hungry, 
Most people feel gro growling in their stomach. The first sign that a Vata is hungry is we start to space out. And I've learned that if I space out and I ignore it and I don't eat, if, by the time my stomach is growling, it's bad news. Like I can't drive. I'm completely whacked out. And so you start to learn how your body signals to you. Um, evacuation. I never heard of, uh, we'll say elimination, um, <laughs> constipated, irregular, dry, small quantities. Absolutely. Constipation is a Vata issue because we're dry. We have dry organs. All right. Um, sweat, scanty, um, temperament, energetic, creative, indecisive, and nervous. So that's where the anxiety bots have struggle with anxiety because it's air, it's cerebral, right? It's moving up. Um, we're very, we have a lot of energy. Memory learns quickly, forgets quickly. That's very true. Um, speech talkative, fast, high pitch, scattered. Climate dislikes cold and dry. Absolutely. Activity, restless and active social routines, dislikes routines, enjoys variety. Okay, pitta. So I'm Vata Pitta. My second leading dosha is Pitta. My Pitta is never really out of balance. It's always, always your leading dosha is the one that's going to get out of, out of balance. So Pitta, medium build and musculature, weight, easy to gain, easy to lose. So that's for me, I'm Vata where I'm thin and it's easy for me to lose weight, but it's, I don't, I'm just thin, right? So Pittas will roller coaster in their weight, right? Skin, warm, Oily, sunburns easily, freckles, has acne, hair straight, fine, premature graying, eyes brightly colored, almond shaped, steady gaze, appetite intense, um, illuminate or uh, uh, elimination, <laughs> evacuation. That's so funny to me. Evacuation, loose, large, regular, large quantity. <laughs> don't don't tell someone on a, on a first date <laughs> what's your bathroom. <laughs> um, uh, but yes, pittas do go to the bathroom very regularly. Uh, they profusely sweat, temperament, bright, intelligent, can be arrogant, driven, direct, and witty. Memory learns quickly, forgets slowly. Speech, articulate, decisive, clear, sharp. Climate, dislikes, heat, and humidity. Activity, competitive, intense. Routine, likes planning and organizing. And so a lot of our athletes are dom uh, dominant in pitta. Pitta is the real athletic uh, quality. Kappa, this is the as broad, strong, and curvy. Weight, easy to gain, hard to lose. Skin, cool, fair, oily, thick, soft, smooth. Hair, oily, wavy, thick. I have very, very thick hair. I know it's hard to tell. I straighten my hair every morning, but it's very thick. Um, that's and it's it can be a little wavy if I don't straighten it. But that's that's the one element of me. So you can have a combination of these guys. You can have like. Some qualities in your physical disposition, that's one thing. And some qualities, that's another thing. Um, as far as like the pitta in me, I, I develop muscle very easily. That's the, and I sweat a lot when I exercise. That's a pitta. But pitta is my secondary. I'm mainly vata. Um, eyes, big, round, thick eyelashes. Appetite, steady. Uh, bathroom, slow, regular, moderate quality. Sweat, moderate. Temperate, calm, stable, grounded, stubborn, greedy, uh, memory learns slowly, forgets slowly, speech slow, uh, deep, low climate, dislikes damp, cool activity, calm, like leisurely activities, uh, routine enjoys room team. So here's the thing about kappas. I always say this about kappas since this is, since I have the least kappa in me, that's the food I have to eat to bring it out of me. Kappas are like potheads without the pot. I love kappas. Kappas are like the most laid back people that you will ever met, meet. Now that's the, that's the beauty. They're very compassionate people. They're the people that want to cuddle up on the sofa and read a good book or write a letter to a friend. Now, when it comes to exercise, kappas, it's the hardest to get them to exercise. And they're the ones who need it the most. Um, it's like lighting a fire under their ass to get them to exercise. Someone like me, who's Vata Pitta, I have the propensity to over exercise. And so I hope that's kind of making sense with what you're seeing from the, um, personality traits of these dispositions. Now the dosha is in depth. So vata is composed of ether and air. So spirit, ether is like spirit, spirit and air means that which moves things. Qualities, dry, light, cold, rough, hard, subtle, clear, mobile. So cold, that's funny, I'm always cold, even though I live in Georgia. Um, sight in uh, body, colon, thighs, hips, ears, bones, organs of touch. So how to balance a vata. So this is it. So I have to eat foods that are warm, warm, moist, and cooked. So that means I have to eat cup of foods that are heavily cooked. 
Um, favor sweet. I do favor sweet, sour, and salty taste. As a vata, one of the great things about a vata is we can eat sugar and it doesn't affect us like it affects other people. Um, massage yourself daily with lots of balancing oils, sesame oil or almond oil. So I've had someone in my comment section say a lot that everyone should be using co coconut oil. And I say, no, for a vata, for me, if I were to eat, cook with coconut oil, it would be bad news bears because coconut oil is vata. I need the sesame oil or the almond oil to bring my energy down. So even in the West, we get like these health kicks, these fads come through, but they don't work for everyone. Because everyone's a different disposition. So establish consistent daily routines, including regular meals. So you notice how they said that in here, because a vata will forget to eat. And I have had boyfriends in the past that would actually come in and have to remind me to eat. Um, so you have to schedule your meals. I have, to, I have a, a time every day where I make sure I eat something. Um, exercise, meditation, and sleep wake times. Avoid erratic schedules. Um, stimulants, cold and uh, dry conditions, too much travel, too much sensory stimulation from smartphones, televisions, and tablets. Okay, why are they saying this? Because smart, because technology is vata. It's the stimulant, right? So if you think of like a city, I live in a city. A city is vata with so much stimulant because vatas are very cerebral and we move a lot. We have a lot of energy and that's the city, right? So um we have to like grounding, grounding foods. Yes. Yes. Grounding foods. And so like for me, even though I love cities, the best situation for me would probably be to live in a small town by myself. Like that would help ground my Vata. All right. Where Kappas probably should be living in a city. Now Pittas are composed of fire and water. So we have fire, water, and it means that which digests things. So qualities, oily, sharp, penetrating, hot, light, unpleasant odor, <laughs> spreading liquid so you see each each um dosha has good and bad qualities right and usually when we see the bad qualities start to come out that's when we know we're in an imbalance right so that's it's a good thing that there are bad qualities quote unquote bad qualities with these doshas because that's what's telling us when the dosha is out of balance so sight and body small intestine stomach sweat um so this is basically when you see the site and body i'm going to put this link to this website down in the description box below guys that's where we're having problems that's where the problems are going to start to occur so organs of vision so if you have sight problems that's that's a that's a that's a pitta thing so how to balance pitta favor foods that are nourishing refreshing and not overheating and i know stephanie doesn't mind me talking about this because we talked about it in our video so when i first met stephanie she would claim she would be annoyed because she said she was sweating too much and i brought up to her that she was eating too hot of foods her body was overheating and that's why she was sweating so much and so for her to go on the Vata diet, which are more cooling foods, her sweat has calmed down a lot because now her body's not overstimulated because for her, that was an issue. For me, I need that. Okay. So favor sweet, bitter, and astringent taste. Keep the body cool as much as possible. Avoid overheating. Incorporate regular, modern, non-competitive ex exercise. So why they say non-competitive here, even a lot of our athletes are dominantly pitta because pittas also have anger issues. So, you know, people like I love exercise. I love to get moving, but I'm not competitive. I don't give a shit. We were talking about this before we started filming it. And she's like, I love the football because they love the tailgating but I don't care who wins. I'm the same way. I don't care who wins. I, it doesn't bother me. I'm not competitive. Pittas are competitive. That's why a lot of pittas are drawn to sport, right? Um, and so when they say non-competitive, they also, that's where anger issues come in, which is an overheating. You think of that fire, like that's that overheating. Avoid stimulants and acidic foods, include meditation, walks in nation, or, or time of self-reflection, self-care into your daily routine as much as possible. Kappa, composed of earth and water, means that which holds things together. Qualities, cold, wet, heavy, dull, sticky, soft, steady, solid, smooth. Chest, lungs, throat, head, sides, pancreas, stomach, lymph, and fat are the sites and body. Like um, uh, sinus issues, if you get cough a lot, if you have phlegmy, that's a, that's a kappa thing, okay? So how to balance kappa. Favor foods that are light, warm, and cooked or colder foods. Favor pungent, venter, astringent taste. Incorporate exercise in your daily routine. Vary your routine from time to time. Wake up before sunrise. Why is that? 
So we talk about this with the, that's the Vata time of day because Kappa is out of all the doshas. The ones who leave with Kappa are the most, have the propensity the most to get really, really lazy. And so Vata time of day is between 2 a.m. and 6 a.m. And so for Kappas, it's almost imperative that you get up before 6 a.m. Because 6 to 10 a.m. is Kappa time. And so if you sleep past into Kappa time, being a Kappa yourself, you're going to have a real hard time getting up. Okay? So, um, so start to understand that the different times of day, too, are going to affect you. Um, wake up before sunrise. Avoid napping during the day. So I, I'm not a napper. Even when I was getting up at 2.30 in the morning, I would not nap because I'm Vata. That's not my propensity. But Kappas will nap. You need to avoid that if you're a Kappa to keep that energy up and not, have, not go down again, right? So eat more lightly in the morning and evening with your biggest meal being at lunchtime. And that's because you're slower as a Kappa. And so the lunchtime hour is the Pitta hour. So from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. is Pitta time of day. So that's when it's fiery. So that's when your digestive system is going to be working the best. And since Kappas do have the propensity to gain weight, that's where they want their biggest meal to be so that they can give their body the biggest service. Um, also, it, it mimics it at night too. So from like 10 p.m. to 2 a.m., that's also pitta time. And so if you go to bed after 10 p.m., you're going to have a harder time falling asleep than if you go to bed in kappa time, which is from 6 p.m. to 10 a.m. That's the best time to fall asleep. Now, Angie, you got your mama. You got you had three babies, right? Right. I guarantee you if you go back and think about all those times, because I know kids get the stomach virus. It's very not normal for kids to start throwing up every once in a while. I guarantee if you think back, your kid was getting up and puking somewhere between 10 p.m. and 2 a.m. Yes. Because that's pizza time. Yeah, they never. They... It's never at a convenient hour, is it? No. <laughs> so that's what's interesting about the, the if you, when you start to understand this stuff, you start to go, holy shit, this makes sense. So, yeah. yeah. So it's easy from, t to, from 2 o'clock in the morning. We always start with the 2 a.m. mark from 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. This is the Vata time. So this is the cerebral time. Um, this is why in traditional yoga, we practice during this time because this is the time of Brahma Morta. This is the time of God. And a lot of people, even people I know who've never heard of this, I remember I used to know a guy, he ran a business next to a studio where I used to teach. And he would come over and chit chat with me all the time. And he, he was a runner. And he would tell me all the time that he loved running before the sun came up in the city of Atlanta. And he was like, there's something so magical about being up at that hour. There's there something really is. There really is. It's the time. It's uh, Rama Morta. Okay. It, may, it makes sense. It, it makes, makes sense. sense. It also makes sense with maybe dreams, you know, cause I feel like I get uh, premonitions and things like, you know, during that time. Well, the witching hour, if you, if you're different from the South, they call it the witching hour where it's like, it's anywhere between like 3 a.m. and 4 a.m. Where, where it actually switches in nature, switches days. And there's this slight pause. If you catch it where everything pauses for a moment and then it switches to the next day, that's the witching hour. It's when the veil is the thinnest and it's happened during that Brahma Okay. So that's all during the time of God. And so, um, and I, I'm going to say people are like, Oh, I'm not a morning person. No one's really a morning person. Like there's not one person I know that's like, yay, I'm getting up at three. You know, like there's not one person I know. Yeah, I say that I'm a morning person. I've turned into a morning person with this prep, but I still my I mean Stephanie can tell you I was at 70's house. There are there were days where my my I have to hit snooze multiple times just to get myself out of bed. Like there, it's still a struggle. But once you do it, once you get yourself up and moving at that time of day, it's very holy. That, that right before the sun comes up, it's, the earth is quiet. And then you start to hear the birds chirping and you're just such a clear vessel. And you're right, the premonitions, that's why we practice because we're having, it's a clear channel to God at that time. But then from 6 uh, a.m. to 10 a.m., we're back again in Kappa time. So I'll ask everybody watching, like, just kind of experiment. Like, it's actually easier to get up before six than after six. Cause once you go into to Kappa time, you're going more into hibernation. Um, and then from 10 AM to 2 PM is pizza time. So that's when you're running around, you're running your errands, you're eating your lunch. And then from 2 PM to 6 PM is back, back to Vata time. 
So this is a lot of times when people are kind of slowing down for the day, but they're ready. They're excited to go home. Some people after work will go. Yeah. When is, when is happy hour? It's 5 PM. That's the Vata time. There's kind of a celebratory, like high five in like, yay, we did it. And then we get from 6 PM to 10 PM. We're back at Kappa time. So this is the best time to eat a light dinner and to go to bed, get in your bed, go to sleep before 10 PM, because after 10 PM, we're back in Pitta. And so that's when it's going to kind of be a, a resurgence of energy. And so if you're not asleep by then, it's going to resurge your energy. Yes. I, and I do all of my crazy shit that I have to delete the next day. If I, if I stay up. <laughs> Damn that pizza time. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's total sense. I just had to do it this morning. I was like, oh, wait. What did I do? I went on a live. I did a live. What? <laughs> it's gone. It's gone. So if you see Angie on live at midnight, <laughs> oh, watch or just say, just like send me like some, some light. <laughs> like, like, some well, that's the pizza coming out. I mean, you think about it. Like, I know, Angie, you got kids that are college age, but I know we can we can think back to that age. We were in our early twenties, and when our break the most breakups happening, and the most people are emotional. They're standing up. I mean, I hear it. I'm in the middle of of Midtown. I got bars around me. I hear girls crying outside at midnight. Like the yeah. emotions are up. You know, I know the alcohol doesn't help, but this is pizza time, right? And then the light of day comes, we go into Brahma Morta, we're like, oh shit, you know? Um, so we also have time, our timeline of life as well. So when we're born and, and until puberty, for girls, it's when you start your period, you flip, we flip. I don't, boys, I guess when your balls drop, I don't know, I'm not a boy. <laughs> but from like, when you're born to that, that marker, that's the kappa time of your life. So you know how you know how there's some kids that are just juicy and chubby and they're just juicy chubby kids but then they grow up they're not so chubby anymore usually the chubby kid at school is chubby because he's born he's kappa and born into a kappa time so when you're in that time of life that's your leading dosha it's going to intensify your leading dosha so that's that chubby kid is usually their kappa and their kappa is being um it's coming to the forefront during the kappa time but you think about kids too like kids all kids get a little puppy fat they get a little mushy their their kids are usually really sweet they they want everyone to get along and be friends they want to cuddle with their mama i'm picturing like my son one of my son's best friends i loved alex alex he was that he yeah was, he's probably and he's not anymore now he's all like um grown and in college and thin and tall and yeah, and, and I will say with Kappa is just because you have the perfect being that. <laughs> like, I don't know, that cute little mushy little there's nothing cuter than a chubby kid. But with Kappa is like even though you have the propensity to be heavy set and can be fat if you don't if you fall into laziness, not all Kappas are heavy. You know, if Kappas can like get in that exercise program, they they're they can be very, very fit if they can control that Kappa in them. You know, but kids are all, even a kid, even me as a, you're born with your dosha. So your dosha doesn't change. So I was born Vata Pitta. But when I was a kid in the kappa stage, that was still my kappa stage where I was growing. You're getting that little, you know, girls when they, it's so funny with little girls when, before they get boobs, if you notice little girls always get like a little bit of a belly before they get boobs, it's like the belly rolls up. And so you see that's that cop a little ring that eventually, you know, and they're just, their body's just all cocooning to turn into the butterfly. Then when you go into, uh, pu through puberty and this lasts all the way for women until menopause for men, again, I don't know, you don't have a marker like we do, but that's your pitta stage. So for Angie and me, and most of our, most of the people watching right now are in their pitta stage. So you're out there, you're building your career, you're having your family. You're nesting like my, I've said this before. One of my Ayurvedic teachers said, there's nothing scarier than a mom in a minivan. <laughs> That's that pit of fire, that mom in that minivan, like protect my babies, protect my babies, put money away for college, for their college, for our savings, for our retirement, build the house, get the kids to all the activities, help them with their homework. It's go, 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 go. And that's that fire, right? You know, and, and then once you go through menopause, or for men, whatever that means for you, the male menopause, 
you're then in your vata stage. So you're coming towards the end of your life. You're more cerebral. You're usually retiring. So you don't have to be in that pitta, dog eat dog, hamster wheel anymore. You can garden more. You can think about God more. Now, I kind of wonder if I've just like, just like stayed in vata <laughs> all the time. My kids were growing up. I was always kind of like, I had the minivan. But I never, I never got on that hamster wheel. <laughs> oh my God. But we know women who have. They're that yes. <laughs> the helicopter mom that's like, do, 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 do. It's like, girl, chill out. Chill yeah. out. Your kids are going to be fine. Yeah. Gonna be, God has a plan for them. They're going to be fine. <laughs> the Vata, so for me as Vata Pitta, I have to, when I get into that stage of my life, which hopefully is many years from now, hopefully, um, I'm not. I'm still holding on to my thirties for dear life. Um, I'm going to have to worry. I've already had arthritis problems. So when I'm a Vata going into the Vata stage, that's when I'm going to have to really be careful about my diet because I'm Vata going into a Vata stage. That's when, that's why a lot of elderly people do st struggle with arthritis and do, cause these, these imbalances start to, so they intensify when you're in that time period, that's your leading dosha. So that's why we see a lot of pittas who are in our age bracket. I mean, how many women do you know, Angie, whose weight fluctuates like crazy? Uh, yes. My that's because well, they're pitta. Yeah. And they're in the pitta stage. Like, mm -hmm. And so when you start to understand this, and the thing about the Ayurvedic dosha system that I love, it just, it just shows you how intelligently designed we all are. And that, um, you know, I, I look back at my child and I've said this before, and this is not my parents' fault because they were not taught this. Both of my parents are Kappa Pitta. My sister and I are both Vata Pitta. So for my parents, like for my mom, eating apples with peanut butter is a great snack for her. But for my sister and me, that was one of the worst things that she could have given us is a raw apple with peanut butter. And I had a lot of digestion problems when I was a child. When I was in the second grade, I would wake up every night and start throwing up. And no one could figure out what was wrong with me. I was fine during the day. But at night, I would just start like projectile vomiting. I went to Scottish Rite Medical Institute. They could not figure out what was going on with my, my digestive system. Well, now, all these years later, I know what was going on with my digestive system. I was being fed the wrong foods. But my parents thought they were healthy foods because the matrix told them that, that apples are, yeah, that apples are healthy. Mm -hmm. Apples are not healthy for my great grandma oh. had a little index card on her refrigerator that said, "Eat an apple every day, keep the doctor away." And then she also had, I remember, like on the same card, it said, um, "Drink peppermint tea." <laughs> like, <I don't> <laughs> she, just certain things I remember, you know, from, you know, from your childhood. The other thing was this has nothing to do with any. Maybe it does because the dosha thing. The whole, like, it's a whole mind, body, mm -hmm. spirit thing, everything. But she also had another little card in her house, and her house was so cluttered. So this was always so funny to me. Think positively of a tidy house. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I know this has nothing to do with what we're talking about. It does, though. Okay, so I would, that, okay, if you're, if you're a grandmama, had like a cluttered house, I would venture to say that one of her, maybe not her leading dosha, but maybe her secondary dosha was kappa. Because kappas will hoard. Kappas will hoard. Yeah, when I say cluttered, it was like that though. It was like not, it wasn't dirty. It yeah. was just boxes. Like, yes. Like things, like she had things stacked up, like she didn't get rid of anything. Like she was saving it all. That's and a kappa. Yes. That's what couples do. And if they do, they don't do it to be like a hoarder. They do it because it's sentimental. There's like yeah. sentimental things they want to hold on to. Where I'm the opposite as a Vata, I get rid of everything. Like I have, I'm a minimalist. Like I clean, like that's a Vata. So I need a little bit more of that. So many sentimental things everywhere. I mean, you see, like I've been filming in a different area of my house lately. So like now I'm in my kitchen. Y'all, my kitchen, my aunt, like I, I've inherited a lot of things. Like I didn't go buy all this stuff, but, and I'm like, it's so special. Cause my aunt, you know, she, she gave me all this China. But your house is stuff. clean, but your house is clean though. Oh that yeah, no, it's clean. But yeah. <laughs> that definitely. So if you're someone that is like Angie's grandmama that had, like, has boxes everywhere, 
that's a kappa element in you. And it's not a bad thing. It's just something to know about yourself. You know, yeah, it's not comforting to me. Yeah. We're not trying to change. You can't change your disposition. You're born with it. It's not going to change. It's how God made you. It's just like, you can't change your race. You can't, well, I guess you can change your eye color with contacts. You can't change all this stuff. God made you that way. All you can do is understand it to help balance it better. Your grandmama having that, ca that kappa element, kappa element, it was part of what made her, her and her, the special child of God. So it's not, I don't, none of this is bad. It's not bad to be any of these. It's just understanding how to manage it. The balance right? in the line. Yes. Like, yes. Me being a Vata, that's how God made me. I'm thin. I'm bony. That's how God made me. I wouldn't be Bryce if I were Kappa. But well, I'm jealous of you. Like, <laughs> well, do you know my mom used to tell me growing up all the time, and I'm, I'm dreading this as you get older, because my mom always struggled with her weight. She's talked about that on the channel before. She always really struggled with her weight. And my sister and I have, have never had that. And, um, I mean, I've been to more Weight Watchers meeting as a kid. I still remember this one time when I was a kid, I went to a Weight Watchers meeting with my mama and I still was right before Thanksgiving. And I remember they said as we, as the meeting was, I was like coloring in the back or something. And I remember as the meeting was ending, the lady said, now remember if you gobble, 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 you wobble, wobble, wobble. And I still remember that to this day. If you gobble, 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 you're wobble, wobble, wobble. And so, um, you know, I remember going with my mom to like, she was always on, mother's a big exerciser. She's at that pizza. She was always on the tennis courts. I remember going to jazzercise classes with her in the 80s and 90s and like sitting in the back. And my mother was doing her, her jazzercise and she did the step aerobics. And I put something on my community tab, a Richard Simmons video. Oh, I saw that. Oh my gosh. I uh, still went into the oldies. Oh, so I watched it last night. I remember, I actually remember some of those routines because my mama would do it. Like, do, 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 do. Like, I remember it. I remember watching my mother do it in her 90s umbros, you know, from the, her 90s get up. And, um, and I love Richard Simmons so much. Like, I still smile every time I see that man. But, um, but I remember all that. And so my, so my, my mom had a very different disposition for my sister and me. And that's the thing too, we have to understand, especially if you're a parent now, children, I was telling Stephanie this, I personally, now I'm not an Ayurvedic doctor, but I do know how to diagnose as a teacher. Cause that informs me when I'm in a yoga room and I have a student, even though I have to be hard on all the students, I have to be hard in different ways, depending on their disposition. And I see this with Sharat, my teacher in India. So I'm very, if you see my body, I'm very, very obviously Vata. Very obviously Vata. Sharat is too. My teacher is too. When he works with me in the MISO room, he's very soft spoken with me. Like he comes up to me and he talks very calmly to me. He's very soft spoken with me. But as someone across the room who's Kappa, he'll scream at them. Why is he doing that? Because the Kappa person needs the, the light put under his ass. But for me, I've already got the, so I'm fire and air. So the air is just blowing up that fire. And, and so he's got to be kind of come in and be more of the calm to bring me back down in my practice. And so that's how, and, and I think, and I, one of my friends, it might've been Stephanie, all of my friends besides myself have kids, but somebody said, I mean, it was Liz. Somebody said, Oh my God, learning this is going to help me speak to my kids differently. Now, little kids, I don't like diagnosing little kids because you just really don't know uh, fully what they're going to be until they're grown, but you can start to notice some of these dispositional qualities. Like as a child, I was always anxious. I was always nervous. That's Vata. So you go, okay, that's a Vata quality coming out. And instead of yelling at the kid, like, don't be nervous. Don't be, that's just going to make it worse. Yeah. So learning how to come down and bring that, that kappa element down. Whereas you have another kid that maybe is more kappa, then you're going to have to be a little bit more um, motivating to get them to do stuff. Right. It's like my nephew, my bless my, I love my nephew so much. He's going to be 10 soon. I can't believe he's going to be 10 soon, but he is so sensitive. He's a Scorpio. He's so sensitive he just, he cares. So he's way more sensitive than his sisters are. Let's just put it that way. And so with Charlie, you brought up the elf on the shelf on Aquarius Rising Africa. And I swear to God, yes. Andrew, my sister almost, I think, I think she almost killed that elf last year because Charlie accidentally knocked it and cried for like three days because he thought that 
the, the elf had lost. So my sister then had to come up with another story that Santa said it was fine. Whereas my niece, Jacqueline, the older niece, would probably go and like pick the elf of the shelf up and be like, ha ha, you know, so. Um, See, that's me being, um, I, I, I lost that damn thing. I couldn't remember where I put it. And then, you know, it was the time when everybody starts getting that elf out and putting it places and all. What'd you call that? Is that the Pitta? Pitta Mama in the, in the mini? Oh, band, yeah. you know? Trying to get that elf outdo each other with the elf. Yeah. Well, I'm the one I'm like, God, well, just go throw it over there. Just go put it over there and maybe that's good enough. You know, like I'm not like I, I'm, I'm very focused on certain things, but that's like I, I, w I never got called up in any of that stuff. But my, you know, my youngest wanted the elf. <laughs> so all the friends and, got it. And oh. she said when she found like we couldn't find it. And then it was just in a, like a, like a drawer in the kitchen. I was like, oh yeah, I guess I put all the Christmas decorations up and then like, was like, oh, oh yeah, no. I just like stuck it in the back of a drawer. And then she's like, oh, here it is. She was like, you're really, <laughs> it's really not real. <laughs> I mean, if you guys are from, a, our friends, Warney and Shanti had never heard of this. If you're from a country that does not have Elf on the Shelf, let me tell you, Angie and I did not have Elf on the Shelf as kids. That did not exist. This is a new phenomenon. And I can't tell you how many times I've heard from my sister where she'll wake up. She'll like, oh my God, I woke up at five o'clock. I was smacking Steve and her husband being like, we got to move the damn elf. We got to move the damn elf. Because the, <laughs> the story is with the elf that the elf turns into like a toy during the day. But at night, the elf is awake and runs around the house. And the elf is like taking inventory of the kids and sending it, which I say that's kind of brilliant. If your kid's pitching a fit, you could be like, little elf over there is watching. Right. I'm not against it or anything like that. I, I just wasn't, I don't know, I just wasn't into it. I just did I would always forget, like your sister, like I would always forget, like, oh, shoot. And then, and then my child would get up and, and the elf hadn't moved, you know, <laughs> it's like, Elf got a little tired last night. I there is a really funny last year. I've got to see if I can find it. This uh, text chain was sh was shared on Instagram, where and my sister's done this with me before, where she's had to text me and say, "Hey, I'm going to change your name and my phone to Santa Claus or the Tooth Fairy. Can you text with me so the kids can see?" Well, same thing happened. I don't know who this family is. They put it on Instagram where one of the kids accidentally knocked the elf. And so as same as my nephew, the kid was like freaking out. And so you see the text chain where the friend is texting one of her friends and saying, Hey, I'm going to change your name. You, you know, my, my son just knocked the elf. Can you text back as Santa just saying it's okay. It's okay. This friend. So that the friend texts the other friend saying, Hey, little, little Johnny, just knock the elf over Santa. Is it okay? Will the elf be okay? Does he still have his magic thinking her friend is going to text her back? Yeah, it's fine. Her friend texts her back a whole ritual. <laughs> like take the sugar and make a circle on the, to, to bring the elf's magic back. Oh, and they I love there. that friend. <laughs> like the whole family had to hold hands around the circle to re revise. And it was, I cannot, it was, I was crying, laughing, everything. She, she had the most elaborate ritual that they had to do as a family to bring the elf back to life. And after you read it, the friend basically just texts back the emoji of the middle finger. <laughs> <laughs> the mom and the kid just back my middle finger to her friend like great now I have to do all this so I thought that was that is priceless like I wish my sister like had texted me and I could have been like pull the sugar down make a circle on the table get all the stuffed animals to sit around the circle whole family hold hands sing kumbaya <laughs> to bring <laughs> as Santa telling you how to bring the elf back to life but it is, it is, I mean, and some families, some parents, those real pits of parents, they go all out, don't they, about moving the elf around. Yeah. And, and I think my sister only has one elf for all of her kids. She has three kids like Angie, but some families have like an elf per child, which is like. Yeah, I only have one still in the house. You know, I have the daughter in New York, the son in college, and then one still at home. Yeah. Yeah, who, who is telling me that um, after this semester, I'm thinking of just getting my GED. <laughs> she is so like, and I'm like, let's, let's, you know, 
research. <laughs> like I'm done. You know, the funny thing is, Angie, if I, if this was like five years ago, 10 years ago, I've been like, no, she needs to finish. She needs to go to college. Yeah, but her teacher, like, one of her teachers, she mentioned it to one of her teachers and her teacher said, um, don't you want that diploma to put on your wall? I just like my mom that. hasn't put her high school diploma on the wall. Like <laughs> I don't even know where mine is. My high school. I don't even know where. I don't even know if my mom even knows where it is. <laughs> yeah. um, I know. I mean, you know, like I. And so there's that thing. We're getting off. I'm getting. We're getting off topic. But there's that thing where, as parents, like just as people, like we, you know, like okay. It, even I thought this because you know I'm like don't really care what people think, right? You know. Yeah. But there's like that little. There's that little voice going. How are you going to explain it to the family? Or how are you going to, you know, like whatever? No, isn't your daughter really into makeup and stuff too and makeup design? And awesome. We're going to, we're going to, I'm going to try to talk her into doing a little show with me where maybe she can have her laptop in her room and I'll be in another room, you know? Yes, so I'll, like, let, I'll let her do my, she wants to demo me. I had to learn how to do makeup for YouTube, but I don't do it because I just never wore makeup before YouTube. So, so, I mean, that's the thing. I mean, I know so many parents who've like pulled their kids out. And, and I will say, I was watching a documentary the other night about the FLDS, about what happened. And some of the kids that got left the FLDS with the Warren Jeff situation, um, a lot of them went and got their GEDs and then went straight into university. And so, yeah. you know, it's, it's not, she'll just go straight into university if she doesn't, if she doesn't want to go to makeup school. It doesn't, it's not, she still has the option to do all that. So you know, kids are just smarter these days too. They figure it out. They figure out the bullshit before we did. So, um, you, know. Well, you know, and whenever I was little, like I was, um, they wanted my, my school wanted me to skip grades mm -hmm. and then my parents wouldn't let me. I remember this, like they wouldn't let me cause they said that I, I don't know. I don't remember why, but you know, and I look back now and I'm like, well, a lot of wasted time, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, school, I mean, it's so, I know so many of my friends are teachers and they all, and I'm not going to say their names, but they all tell me they hate it so much because they can't teach. They have to go by what the government approves. Um, the pressure on teachers now is through the roof. It's yeah. basically like they can't, if they breathe wrong, you know, it's, it's crazy. And for my friends who are Republicans or Mr. T supporters, they can't say anything, no. you know, and their coworkers can talk about Mr. B all day. But they can't talk. And it's like, this is, this is crazy. And so, um, you know, that's such an injustice, you know, and it's, it's when I was growing up, my teachers never talked about that, like what political party they affiliated with. We learned about the political parties, but they never gave. So the fact that teachers are even talking about that now in schools to kids about their own affiliation they is are. troublesome. They really are. And also like, even in like one of her classes, that's not even, you know, it's just like, literature or something my cat's hiding in some box and he keeps he's in the pantry so i'm just gonna be like fluffy hair <laughs> whatever 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 he's in right now um but he's kind of it sounds scary over there <laughs> anyway but so yeah this um one class that she's in and this happened with my son too before he graduated from high school but like they'd have to write papers you know, or do some kind of an essay and, and the teachers would have them write about like political things or, mm -hmm. and I mean, they you totally, I could, I could tell were totally like judging and, um, grading. There was an agenda. Yes. There was an agenda, um, for sure. And even like one of the things, like, what was it when my son was there? He wanted to, they had to do something about an entrepreneur. And so him being my son and being, you know, how awesome he is. He's like, I want to do President Trump. And what that was a That was a <gasps> Not an entrepreneur. And then, and then he says, well, I want to do my mom. You are no. an entrepreneur. No, teacher said, no. This was in marketing class, I think. Um, ooh, That's yeah. so wrong. That's so yes. wrong. And so he can write anything. My son can write. He can. 
here we are talking the same thing, like play in the game. Like we can play the game. We can play the matrix game. Mm-hmm. He does it all the time. He writes papers for all his friends. You know, like he's like, all right, what am I writing about this time? Mm-hmm. I am like, yeah, he goes, I'm really good at writing. I'm really, you know, quick. He had to write a paper uh, recently in Spanish. He doesn't even know Spanish. He was just like, <laughs> translate. <laughs> exactly. He's like, oh, you know, what did he get? And he goes, he got a 98. And I'm like, Damn, Google's good. <laughs> I wish we had Google Translate when we were kids. I mean, we're, I mean, talking about this is even a little bit scary. I'm like, well, I mean, but seriously, what is school for? If it is anything, it's just a debt. It's just racking up debt for kids. Like, I'm not doing anything that had to do with my college education right now. I didn't do. I mean, when I went to India, I basically took my college education and put it down the toilet to go to India and do all that. So I, I don't, you know, I say, you know, with people, the only good thing college really gives you is a social education where you're learning how to socialize, you're learning how to, you know, and, uh, I I remember my dad used to tell us that when he went to vet school, he went to vet school at the university of Georgia. And he said the first day of one of his classes, one of the professors said the people who make the A's and the B's in this class will go on to teach veterinary medicine. The people who make the C's in this class will be the ones who are sending the million dollar checks into the alumni fund. And my parents explained that they always wanted us to have a social life because that social etiquette was how you learned bedside manners and how you learned how to work with people, you know, and that's what made you a good business person. As they always say, what do you call a medical student that graduates medical school with a C? A doctor. A doctor. And no employer has ever asked me what my grades were. Like yeah. no employers ever been like, so what did you get in this class? No, they're like, okay, can you do the job? Cool. You're hired. Like, you know, so, um, all right. Um, so yeah, so, um, yeah, so it's school. What is it good for? But yeah. anyway, guys, Angie, I know you have to get off soon. I know you had to go. Thing, like, I just wanted to say this, like this whole cooking thing, like no, look I, at your vegetables guys. Yeah. So I, we had to we had to pull all the peppers out of the garden because it got cold, and yeah, we had so a cold snap. It was very I strange for us. Out what to do it. I've got a big, big, like probably about three bushels of peppers out on my back porch right now, and they're all like dirty. I've got to go hose them off and all. But um, they little bok choy, all this stuff. But this is like what I just put it in water, like and it'll last. There's water in here, and it'll last for so long and. But this cooking thing, like I didn't go to college for this. And but oh my God, but Angie, it's you, what I love, love to do. do. Yes. Do you do. understand? So I think with you, when you really sit down and study this Ayurvedic stuff, you're going to really have the magic touch. And, and so for the people watching, like, let us know down in the description box below what dosha you are and what, you know, I think that's a. That would be really fun for me. That would be so yes. much- and you can come up with the recipe and then you can show how you cook it like a cooking show for, uh, you know, multiple recipes for kappa, for vata, for pitta, because you understand food. And I think, you know, once you really study the doshas, you start to understand, it starts to become a little bit common sense. The more you start to study the doshas, it starts to all of a sudden make sense. Oh, I get it. This is what this element is. So that makes sense that, uh, a lettuce, you think about the lettuce with all the leaves are kind of that crazy that's vata. Vatas are very creative. They're very like woo woo. They're very into the, a lot of vatas are very like psychically oriented and they get kind of in the clouds sometimes. So you think about the, the, the foods that are reaching for the clouds up the vine, the grapes, you know, and then you think about like kappas being very grounded and being very like wanting to snuggle and get up and all warm and cozy and being a little lazy sometimes. Well, what are the foods that represent that? Potatoes, sweet potatoes carrots rooted vegetables that are in the ground now as a vata to eat those rooted vegetables they have to now be cooked so the dishes with potatoes so french fries are great for vatas sorry kappas but french fries are great for vatas because it grounds us i'm really thinking that i might be more vata because i i haven't really figured that out yet because i crave (laughs) salads Mm -hmm. raw tomatoes all, you know, I'll, all the I'll just, foods. yeah, I'll just eat arugula. It's like, yeah, I I'll, love arugula. Yeah. I'll I'll put it in my car and just, uh, yes, it. yes. But I also like a potato chip. 
Well, so, and I will uh, say, so as uh, the more you're, it's, it's not going to be one size fits all for all Vata pittas or all Pitta Vatas, because like there are some, like I absolutely cannot eat grapes. I cannot eat grapes. It's never good. I cannot eat raw broccoli. It's never good. I can eat sauteed broccoli or cooked broccoli, but I cannot, it, it's, it's bad news bears. It, it kills my stomach. I can't do like rough, um, like say romaine lettuce. Yes, um, that's I do it, but I've noticed that it's messing with me. And so yeah. I have to like wilt it. I have to like char it so I can see. I, I know these things yeah. without even really realizing it was about the dosha. Exactly. So, um, I, I have to grill it or wilt it just a little bit. I have to soften it up. So mm -hmm. what does cooking do to the food? It changes the disposition of the elements. So it changes the chemical compound of the food to match your energy. Now, there are some Vata foods that I can do. Like um, I can, let me, cantaloupe. I can eat cantaloupe. I'm fine. You know, um, watermelon, not so much. Now, let's say that I'm, I'm going to go out to dinner and there's a really great salad that I want to eat at this restaurant. So as a Vata, now that I have this information that that's a Vata food, what I'll do is the week leading up to that dinner, I'll only eat Kappa foods so that when I have the salad, it's not going to affect me as much as it would if I had been eating Vata foods all week. Does that make sense? So you're balancing the energy a little bit. So it doesn't mean you're never going to eat foods that you, that are your disposition. It just means you're going to learn how to moderate that. Um, for a vata, if you have like baked apples or apples, if you can take a vata food and cook it, like the cooked lettuce, apples as well, like I can do applesauce, I can do apple pie, but I can't do a raw apple. Right. I can do pears, pears. So what I would suggest for people too, if you're getting to know this, every time you eat something, just keep a little food diary. It doesn't have to be a long, just say, okay, today I had a salad, wait like 30 minutes to an hour, write down how you're feeling. Do you feel good or does your stomach kind of hurt? Also, again, you saw the emotions. So sometimes food is not going to, an imbalance in food is not going to shine forth in like diarrhea or constipation. It's going to shine forth with depression or anxiety. I so never thought about that. I've really never thought about how food would cause those kind of things. I get bloat. <laughs> like, <laughs> really, I look like I'm pregnant. Like it's yeah, fun. That's and I'm like, oh, here I am. Like, <laughs> obviously I can't digest this. You know, so, so pay attention to that. So if you eat, if eat something, but you're not feeling any like physical pains, but you notice your anxiety starts to rise an hour later, or maybe depression sets in, just make a little note of it. So what I would suggest for people that are starting this, even if you don't know what your disposition is yet, get a little notebook, everything you eat, write it down, what you ate, and then wait like 30 minutes to an hour after you eat and then write down how you're feeling. So if you have, um, a salad and you feel great an hour later, write down, felt great, feel fantastic. If not, be like, not feeling so hot. And then maybe try it again and see if it's, was the salad or maybe, you know, so you can start to figure out, I've gotten to the point where if I walk into a restaurant, I can smell in the restaurant, whether I'm going to have an upset stomach or not. And that's the oil that I'm smelling. So like, again, as, as someone who's Vata, coconut oil is the worst thing a Vata can do. Even putting coconut oil on your skin as a Vata is terrible. It's going to cause your anxiety to go up. Don't do it. You need almond oil or sesame oil. Yeah, for, um, we haven't, I've not really discussed this on my channel or with you or anything, but uh, 2019, I got really, really sick, really sick. And I started, I, I, I only did coconut oil. Like I was trying to do like, you know, because it's healthy, it's, yeah, it's a fad. It's yeah. Bad. It's bad stuff. That's very interesting. Like I only used it on my skin. I only, I used it in all my cooking. Um, and um, that's when I started going blind. I have inflammation in my arteries that go to my head. I started losing my hair. Um, that, yeah. That's a yeah. vodka thing is so, so yeah, that's a good. So you see guys, the darts start to connect. Mm -hmm. uh, they say, what, who was it that said, let food be thy medicine? Yeah. Oh, I can't remember, but someone, yeah. Someone I, said yeah. that. <laughs> someone said it. Uh -huh. Some dead right. guy said it. I've always known that was right. But I use mainly like ghee now mm -hmm. and I use olive oil. Um, I use a lot of sesame oil. I'm feeling better. And I didn't it's even do this because of that. I just started like liking these foods and feeling good with these foods. A lot of Indian foods. Yeah. Well, India is very sattvic. So, um, there's three gunas, which I don't think I've talked about that much on my, um, channel, which is Rajas, Tamas and Satsvik. 
Uh, Rajas is fire. Tomas is like not the opposite of fire, like really kind of lethargic energy. And then Satvik is balanced. And we have the three energies in our body too, which this doesn't have to do with the doshas, but Satvik. So the uh, Indian culture, their food is very Satvik. They make it very balanced. Um, because they understand this stuff. They understand the, the more detail, finer details of, of um, so when you think about what you're doing is you were balancing the energies of the food. You know, I've said this before and damn these controllers, damn these controllers. Mm -hmm. They've put it to a point where in families, this is not possible for a lot of families, but in a healthy family, every single human being in that family would be eating a different meal every night. Um, yeah, I, I thought about this earlier because I, years ago, I wrote a blog post, like when my kids were little and it was like clean slate, a clean, clean plate club. And it was all about like getting your kids to like clean their plates. I mean, I go back and look at some of this stuff now and I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> no, I didn't know. You know, that's what I want to say is like as Westerners, like we didn't know, no one's told us this. This is a lost ancient um, form of an Ayurvedic. If you study the history of Ayurveda, this is where Western medicine comes from. But me Western medicine took a sharp detour and started like inverting it, right? And even surgeries, the original surgery came from Ayurveda when they had to go in and move things in the body. So, so Ayurveda is like the mothership of, of all things sacred and healthy. And it comes from the Vedic text, which are allegedly these texts were given to us by Shiva, who's one of the, the triheads of God in the Hindu faith. Um, I think the Hindu deities, um, in my personal opinion, are off-worlders. That's just my personal opinion. Um, and I think that uh, and Shiva gave the people the language of Sanskrit, the light language of Sanskrit, which is what the Vedic text is written in. And it's very healing language. So um, it so really is. Like I've listened to a few people um, with the light language. I, I don't know how my grandmother spoke in tongues. Yeah, same thing. Whatever. Yeah. I think it's the same thing. Um, I've done that without even realizing <laughs> when I was in like a deep, like, you know, having a, having a moment of like, really yeah. like out of control, like in, in prayer. Or yeah. Right. And um, I've done that. Um, but um, yeah, uh, recently I was watching someone, I can't remember what channel it was. And, and this woman was doing this light language and, she, and she was, I was staying, you know, she said, stand up and like, put your hands around and make a cylinder around you. I could feel like as she was speaking, I of course could not understand what she was saying, but I feel like my spirit knew yeah. what, she was, what she was saying and, or understood it. And I was, I was, I, I could feel that around me. I could feel the cylinder around me. I could feel the energy. Yeah. yeah, it's all like, pen everything around you. Putting through the t television, you know, like because I'm watching it, you know, on my yeah, yeah. So well, it's, I, I mean, it's a computer. It's all energy, and energy, as as my friend Emmy said, who's a Reiki practitioner, energy doesn't know time or space. Energy just is, and so absolutely, absolutely. I did a, um, a, a video yesterday with a friend of mine. I'm learning. I'm trying to learn how to do this. I haven't figured out how to edit the videos yet. But um, so I just like I'll put them out. Sure. There. I'll show you. <laughs> <laughs> but you love my friend Beth. That I did a video with I'll yesterday. Have to watch it. I'm gonna do it um, Tuesday. I'm planning to do Tuesday talks because you have your Mystery Monday, so I'm gonna do Tuesday talks and I'm doing the Wednesday thing. So um, I'm trying to, but so Tuesday Beth will air. But she was talking about that, like she sees an energy healer on Zoom. Yeah, that's so how that's how Emmy does her. Her patients are patients. Her clients is over Zoom because energy doesn't know time or space. So that's why you can feel the energy. Like if you watch YouTube's, you can feel the energy of the YouTuber coming through the, through the zoom, right? Yes, and you yes, can also yes. spell cast it through the zoom too, by those little infiltrators. So, um, like, and like the whole thing, like with, um, saging or whatever you want to do to, to cleanse your space. Um, I really do believe in all that. Like oh, absolutely. Part, and it's all created by God. You I know? have my sage right here, my sage and my dragon's blood. It's right here. This is all created by God. Why do you think they brought Yahshua when he was born? Frankincense and mirth and essential oil. All these things are given to us by God. And these elements of nature are given to us by God. This is out, you know, so whatever dosha you are, there's, there's a element there you've got to learn from, you know? And so, and so it's all goes, it all goes back to the idea of energy. We are energy. Our bodies are energy. 
everything's just energy. And so um, the more we learn how to be in that energy and not as separate from that energy, the, the more balanced we are, you know, and the more, the more common, no, who, who wants to live in a life that's not balanced in a life that's, that's got stress. And if you can start something as simple as just changing your diet. Yeah. Just like everything. Like I, I know whenever Beth and I started talking yesterday on zoom, she had palm stones, like she was holding oh, her. Yeah. <laughs> And I was like, you know, I'm thinking, I'm like, you know what? Poblano peppers work too. Yes, yes. <laughs> I know. Angie and I live so close together, but I swear when you come to my house one day, Angie, you're going to be, when you see my desk, you're going to be like, what the hell? It's all, I got rocks everywhere. No, I got you should see, you should, my whole house. My whole house is like freaky. <laughs> Get a little witchy. I don't, I don't know here. what my husband really thinks now because I'm we're like, um, it's her husband's a good old Georgia boy. He's just a good old Georgia boy. <laughs> like it's probably yeah. one of his friends. He had he lived with in, in Colorado years ago, right after he got out of college, and he graduated college in like '91. He's he's five years older than me. But um, so he lived with uh, some guys out in Colorado years ago. And you may know of their band that was called Double Wide. And then now Bradley Cole Smith in Atlanta. Bradley Cole Smith, look him up. He does like the Elvis show at like. Um, have to, hold on one second. I'm just going to turn on. Keep, keep talking. I'm just going to turn my fan on quickly. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So my husband's friends, um, Bradley Cole Smith. He does the Elvis show at Smith's Old Bar. Sometimes. Yeah, I'm close to Smith's Old Bar. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I know you've heard. They live over in Inman Park. I yep. know you've heard them before. He's awesome. He writes great, great music. And um, he's actually told me I could use one of his songs. It's called Southern Charm for, for something. But um, I am actually literally <laughs> right up the road from Smith's Old Bar. It is literally right by the grocery store. Actually, it's one. I'm going to show the people the picture. It's one of the grocery stores I go to. There's two grocery stores I go to. One Publix I go to is near Smithville Bar. That's a real hoity-toity Publix. Yeah. The other Publix I go through, I go to is in downtown Atlanta. That's the fun Publix because someone's all, Publix is one of our grocery store chains down here. Someone's always getting arrested. <laughs> <laughs> at that public so it's fun um but yeah it's literally right up the street for me literally right up the street for me for sure i, I don't know why i was telling this story but yeah so one of the guys from the band the band was called double wide great little songs but you can't really find double wide on spotify anymore but you can look up like bradley cole smith and their songs are there the first one um is fanny <laughs> f-a-n-n-y and it's such a good little song and then like one more mile. I mean, there are a bunch of good songs, but um, anyway, so Walker Wilford was the drummer for the band back in the day. And he parked at our house last Saturday for the Georgia game. He brought his three boys and I hadn't seen his oldest. He's 16 now since he was a baby. And I finished up at the, I had a festival Saturday. I was exhausted, came home. Anyway, they, our son drove them downtown, like to the, where they, you know, parked for, so he wouldn't have to get parking and stuff for, for the game. Anyway, afterwards, I mean, they're here and he's like, I've got sage burning. <laughs> you know, this is where this was going. <laughs> he's like, what's happened in the deep south? And, so, and we haven't seen him in probably 15 years. Last time he was here, he was like playing in a golf tournament with my husband. <laughs> well, I want to show you guys too. So here's, I have sprays as well. Here's Palo Santo spray. I have white spray spray here. So for all y'all watching, all y'all, that's so Southern, all y'all watching, Sandy knows what I'm, uh, I can't, Angie knows what I mean. I'm thinking, yes. Dan and Pal, Angie, Angie knows what I mean when I say all y'all. If you yeah. can't burn the sage, you can just get the spray bottles. <laughs> spray bottles. But yeah, he was like, I smell something. I was like, oh, that's just the sage over there. Just had a long day at the festival, needed to kind of cleanse the, the demons out. Get the demons I out. I don't enjoy hearing the game on the television. Like it just gets on my nerves. I needed to kind of get some calm going on in here. Um, anyway, it's like I said, now I forget what exactly what I said, but I was like, I'm not going to, I don't know. I forgot what I said. I said, I'm not going to like start like doing some ritual or anything. And he goes, well, we're not going to be dancing naked. He, said, all night. he said, thank you. <laughs> 
<laughs> but then afterwards, like, it was just so funny because they live in, like, um, Sandy Springs, like, mm-hmm. Buckhead, you know, where it split from. Mm-hmm. At the room, yeah. Yep. And uh, so he and his boys were leaving, and as they go out our front door, we hear a siren go by from the distance. And I said, oh, y'all wait just a minute. You'll hear the coyotes. Because <laughs> they have. Yes, they put the sirens, and we have like there's several dens of coyotes all around my house because we live kind of back in the. They day. think you're legit in a coven right now, Angie. I think they think you're legit. <laughs> you're like... <laughs> They're like, what happened? She's summoning coyotes. Listen, I'll have to send you his our picture, a great picture. You can totally use it. It's hilarious. I mean, we just like we took a picture in my kitchen right here. <laughs> like when he was here the other night, but um, it was just really funny. And his his little boys, the little ones, they ran and got in the in his truck. But the sixteen year old stayed there, and you know they were like, "You miss y'all miss the coyotes." They're like, "Really, coyotes? Like we're so used to it here." And she summoned them. She was out there summoning them. <laughs> It's so bad, but it was just funny. It was like, okay, those boys had a really good time coming to Angie's house. Like, oh yeah, yeah. you know the kids are curious. They're like, wait a minute, Angie's the cool mom. <laughs> Angie's not pushing a Bible study; she's pushing the sage. Like, she's the cool mom. <laughs> Y'all can feel good coming in here, burning my sage and everything. Sage, summoning coyotes, like <laughs> maybe some like. Dust bunnies on the floor, but the air is clear. (laughs) All that matters. That is awesome. Well, you guys also on Angie's channel, if you watch, she's so funny. I think you're like the epitome of the savage Southern lady because Southern women, I mean, I always tell people, I feel like I grew up in still Magnolias with my mama and her friends. That is what Southern women are like. And Angie is like the funniest, but politest and funniest person. And if you just need some good old videos to watch to make you smile. Go watch her videos. And y'all, I'm so excited. I know, Angie, you got to leave in a second because I know you said you had to be off at like, what, 3.15? Yeah, um, but I'm going to be cooking like a meal tonight. And I'll, I'll try to take pictures of it. And I'm thinking, and you can, t- you can help me figure out which dosha it's for. <laughs> I mean, I'll sit there and look through stuff too and like send you com- combinations of what y'all, because I mean, everyone's going to be a little bit different anyway, but y'all like, I think this is when, when Angie, as I said in the beginning, when you text me that idea, I was like, genius. That is brilliant. Brilliant. And people need help. I'm not, I'm not a domestic diva. I do. I know how to turn my microwave on. That's about it. So um, when I lived in Los Angeles, my oven stored my sweaters. So um, I, my, my form of cooking is Grubhub. So um, yeah, come a running boys. (laughs) I'm just kidding. (laughs) I can microwave you something. That's what I'll do. Um, So so I think that when they say the way to a man's heart is through his stomach, I'm like, that is so bullshit. That you're going to get the wrong kind of man. (laughs) <laughs> the way to a man's heart is through another anatomy, another, another, another. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I mean, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I listen. The only thing that would motivate me to try to learn how to cook is if I had a kid. Other than that, I'm just not like, that's just not, but that's me. That's my Vata. I said with, I said that with, um, with, uh, Stephanie, m- most Vatas, most food critics, our chefs are not going to be Vata because Vatas are kind of just connect. Like we forget to eat. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't eat for like, I don't, I was, t- I, most Vatas, um, eat to live. We eat for survival purposes only. I actually don't even like like dating. I, I'm not even someone that likes going out to dinner on dates. I'd rather go do some fun activity. Um, so I need someone like Angie when it comes to like doing this kind of stuff. Like she's your girl. I can teach you about the doshas, but Angie's the one that understands food. And she's the one that's, that's, that's incredibly gifted in the kitchen. I'm not gifted in the kitchen. I don't even know. I, I had to boil an egg once and I had to call my mom. I'm 39 years old. I had to call my mom to ask, how do I boil an egg? How does this work? So, so that's not, that's just not, I have talents in other areas. I'm a really good folder. I'm really good at laundry, but as far as the kitchen, oh, over. mine's always on the sofa. I'm always having to push it out of the way. So nobody sees it on the camera. 
<laughs> I'm so like the way I fold my towels. So, so, but this is what makes the world go round, right? Is that we have people like Angie that, that understand that she's, a, she has a God given talent mm -hmm. with food and, and doing food is an art form, not an art form that I have. I don't have that talent. That's the thing is I hate to throw away food. And so I'm looking at this plate here. I, you know, I have all these things and I'm like, oh my goodness, I can't let these poblano peppers, we just had to pull all this up. I can't let them go to waste. I hope somebody will eat chili rellenos with me. Like, you know, I'm going to make a bunch. And then I'm thinking, well, I've got so many. What am I going to do? So I'm thinking, well, I'll look up how to make that and then freeze it. And then whatever. Yeah. Whenever I need it. But, and that's, um, I, I, I actually this morning, I bought a, a pre-sliced banana bread at the store. At Publix, I put it on the counter. It sat and that was never opened. And I went to go get a piece, and there was mold on it. Nope. That's and so I had to throw it away. That's just how I just I bought it thinking, oh, this will be a great little snack for me. And I just never even opened the box. So that's where we need people like Angie because I'm like, I don't even know what it is you just said there. Whatever, <laughs> whatever plate that was. So, so. <laughs> I'll get you a chili relleno. I, I know. Quesadilla. <laughs> That's about it. So it's like a stuffed poblano pepper. And then anyway, I'll, I'll do it. I'll do a little video. No video. I will share it on my community tab. And guys, I know I just like, I went, like I said, I was laying in bed when Angie texted me that. And I was like, oh, genius, Angie, genius. Yes. Do it. Angie, do a cooking segment of these recipes for the doshas. Like, genius because I get so many emails from so and I'm so happy that people are taking an interest in this, this subject because this is going to change the fucking world like when we start to realize we're energy and we can like be our own alchemist then we've taken our sovereignty back so I support you Angie guys let us know in the comment section below if there's a dish that you want to see Angie cook that's let us know that would be um, really fun for me because like I'm I, I would like that I would really love that I would really love some ideas and yes uh, and know. go subscribe to her channel guys because when she starts I don't do goat anything well I most most <laughs> Ayurvedic um recipes are not going to call for meat. Uh, some Ayurvedic doctors will include meat, but most of them won't because in India, in India tradition, you don't like India is 80% vegetarian. So fish. Is yeah, fish. that's a lot of people who are, who will eat fish from time to time. So just let mm -hmm. us know guys, because I'm so excited. Like I said, like I was, I text you like what Monday and I was like, let's do an episode this week because that is such a brilliant idea, especially coming up in the holidays where we're going to be for in America. We've got Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas, you know, we've got all these bam, bam, bam. We're going to be eating all these foods that are, that other people prepare. That's going to kind of pull us out of whack. So during the time when we're not in holiday season, if we can start to learn how to balance that energy, that would be amazing. So you guys, and also, again, as I've said, if there is someone in your life that is hard to buy for, or you got a kid's teacher or something, go to Angie's website. I, I think that would be such a cool gift. To send them some fickle. But there's a code I've got going on right now. I still have the Bryce code going, but now I've got one that's spicy, S-P-I-C-Y. People can remember that because they're like, if you like spicy food, S-P-I-C-Y, all caps, it's 20% off. There you uh, go, guys. So if you need, if you have somebody to buy for that you don't know what to get, and it's, it's affordable, and like, like I said, even like your kids' teachers, like they're really beautifully packaged. Like that's such a cool gift to give someone. So Go down there, check out her website and give us ideas, guys, because I'm so excited. And thank you for coming up with this idea, Angie. This is a brilliant idea. I'm sorry I talked so long, but I'm, just, I'm excited. Oh, I'm excited too. The kitchen, this is my favorite place to be. Like, I love to be in the kitchen. So. My, I, <laughs> my kitchen is... I'm set up in the kitchen to do this with Bryce. <laughs> my kitchen is my yoga room. That's where I, I tell people I literally practice in the morning in front of the refrigerator, and the dog bowl. So <laughs> it's nothing glamorous. So, um, so guys let go subscribe to Angie's channel because all of these cooking episodes are going to be on her channel. Guys, I will always share them when she loads one. I'll put it on my community tab so you can link over to her channel, but go subscribe to her channel so that you can find these recipes easily when, uh, when we start doing them and she starts doing them because you know, my sister watches cooking episodes all the time because she's got three kids. You know, this, I know this is something people who have kids are all constantly looking for recipes so that you can bookmark her channel so that we can, we can start healing the world one pickle at a time. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a really good name for a sex shop, actually. 
killing the world one pickle at a time. So <laughs> I pickle these too. So listen, listen. If anybody wants to open, if your dream is to open up a sex shop, you're welcome to have that name. Healing the world one pickle at a time. So <laughs> Like um, there was this old man friend of mine. He he's 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 passed on now, but his name was Hugh Christian. <laughs> he was the funniest guy, and he used to always. Um, I would see him down at the bar at Harry Bissett's, and he would uh, he was always in his suit, you know, and everything, and his little hat. He would say, his little fedora, he'd say, "Hey!" Every time he would see me, he'd say, "Pickles last longer than cucumbers." <laughs> Okay, on that note, <laughs> that could be a tagline for a sex shop. So. I never knew what he meant, but, but you saying that about a sex shop just made me realize what he meant. He's giving you a little wink from the other side right now. He's like, <laughs> I know he is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, all right, guys. Thank you so much, Angie. I know you got to go go be a mom now, but I'm I will get this video up, and you guys like let us know, please, like, because this is such a brilliant idea, and we're here to change the world. So we're we're gonna change the world one pickle at a time. So one dosha at a time. So bye, guys. Bye. <laughs>